Yo, what's up and welcome to another full behind the scenes of one of our commercial projects and this is probably one of the larger ones that we had in the past because we're currently in Las Vegas shooting a six week documentary project for one of our clients and in this video I will show you all the ins and outs, what equipment we use, what lenses, what audio as well as a couple of tips and tricks on how to pull off a project like this. So shout out to our sponsor Epidemic Sounds for sponsoring this video and more on this after the intro. My name is Damien Cooper and welcome to Monkey Fix. So let's start the video by telling you a little bit about this project. So we are working for a company called Poker Code and this is a poker coaching site and we've already done a couple of projects for them in the past and there's even one full behind the scenes on this channel about one of these projects. This project is a little bit different because before we were filming guys play online poker and this time we are here in Las Vegas doing the World Series of Poker and we're filming some guys playing live poker, playing for potentially millions of dollars. The entire project is a rather raw behind the scenes documentary fly on the wall kind of concept whereas our other projects were a little bit more narrated we also had interviews in there and we did some funny editing this one is really just following some guys around and creating a more sophisticated mature kind of documentary about those players from their start here in Las Vegas all the way to hopefully winning a lot of money in the end and this is where the magic happens the Rio Convention Centers and here thousands of players play for millions of dollars every day and this is also where we spend most of our time filming this documentary because this is obviously where our players play poker. Unfortunately, the lighting situation here is really challenging. The light is really dark and in some spots it's really bright, but this isn't the biggest problem. The biggest problem is the white balance because it's really different in all of the different scenarios. But when you know your ins and outs and you know how to quickly change your white balance in your camera, this isn't too big of a problem. Since this is a project that is spanning over a couple of weeks, I thought it'd be cool to show you around and show you where we live. So right here, this is our recreational area that we hardly ever use. And now we go into the heart of our little house. This is our kitchen slash dining room slash work area. So we hijacked the biggest table right here and we brought our iMac, RAID systems and all that kind of equipment so that Bell can edit these episodes. And Franco is sitting over there assisting and editing time lapses on his laptop. And this is the kitchen that we have going further into our living room. And since this is supposed to be a real behind the scenes, we didn't clean up anything and it looks like a freaking mess. But this is what the reality looks like. So right here, this is our chill area. We have a TV and we battle ourselves in Mario Kart every night when we have a little bit of time. Outside, there's a pool area and some more space to just chill, but we hardly ever use it because it's not that warm anymore. I mean, it's really warm outside, but the pool isn't heated, so it's pretty much freezing. But this is pretty much it, and we've been living here. There's more bedrooms on the other side for eight people, I think. So this is where Bell, Franco and I live as a production team, but also a couple of the players that we're actually filming because we've become friends over the years, uh, because we've done that for quite a while now. And it's pretty cool. Obviously, it's a long time to just be together with a couple of people. But overall, this is just where we live on a project like this. And since you're already sitting in our editing bay, this is a great opportunity to talk about today's sponsor, Epidemic Sound, because we are using Epidemic Sound for all of our music editing. Fun fact, this series is more of a raw behind the scenes documentary series. So in the first episode, we didn't use any music at all, but it just didn't feel right because we were missing a crucial part of storytelling and that is music. So from the second episode on, we used Epidemic Sound for enhanced storytelling. Using music in a documentary like this is a very powerful tool to have. We use it for the build of suspense, for the passing of time, but also for our B-roll sequences. And we chose to go with a more old school school western kind of style instead of using very modern dubstep or trap music and this works very well for the poker scene that we're filming here. And 
And the cool thing about this is that our client has an Epidemic Sound subscription themselves because they upload a lot of YouTube content even when we are not the one filming or shooting. So they have a subscription for their own YouTube channel for $10 a month so that they can use Epidemic Sound for all of their content, for all of their social media, not only their YouTube, but also their Facebook and Instagram page. And if they didn't have that license, we could actually use our commercial license for $25 a month because that not only covers our own stuff, but also stuff that we do as freelancers for other clients as well. So since this is a fast turnaround project and we're shooting 19 episodes over the course of about one and a half months, we don't really have time to look for music in a lot of different places. So Epidemic Sound is the way to go. And since they have such a huge library of great music choices, it's really easy to find the right music just in a nick of time. And that makes editing these a lot easier when it comes to fast turnaround projects like this. And you're in luck because today is Black Friday and if you want to sign up for Epidemic Sound, you get 90 days for free with our code right here if you use the link down in the description. So if you're interested in Epidemic Sound yourself, and I highly recommend it because we use it not only for this project, but for all of our other projects as well, then go down in the description below, click on that link and use our code to get 90 days for free. Let's talk a little bit about camera equipment because this is what most of you are the most interested in anyway. For this project, I chose the Canon C300 Mark III and I didn't go with the Canon C70 for 99% of these shots. And I know that I chose the Canon C70 over the C300 for the last project that was pretty similar to this, but overall, I still prefer the Canon C300 Mark III for its better ergonomics and just better battery solutions, shotgun micro solutions, everything. So here I'm using a Canon C300 Mark III with a bunch of cine lenses as well as other lenses, but I will talk about lenses in a little bit. I am using V-mount batteries and since we had to travel with an airplane, I couldn't use my 150 watt batteries that I usually use. So I used the Bebop 98 watt batteries because they are actually airplane travel approved. And this gives me about two, two and a half hours per battery charge and I have three of those so this usually gets me through an entire day of shooting. Next up is the audio solution and for this I'm using the Daydy S Mic 2S and this is the near perfect shotgun microphone for this setup because it is really short, it is tiny and it produces a really great sound. And I'm routing this directly via XLR into the Canon C300 Mark III and I also have a safety channel enabled. So I have one channel that is roughly about the audio levels that I want to record at but I have a second audio recording channel that is lower so if somebody screams like the guy in the background the entire time then I still have that safety channel to fall back to. Obviously, it would have been much nicer to have a separate sound guy for everything with a boom pole or even with laugh mics to have all of our subjects mic'd up. But on a project like this, where you already have a small crew over six weeks, the added cost for adding more personnel to the crew, in my opinion, would probably not have been worth it for this kind of project. When it comes to our recording formats, we use the smallest recording format possible, which is still 4K 422 10-bit. And in the Canon C300, that leaves us at about 150 gigabytes per day. And so far, I think we shot about three terabytes. So this is still a lot of data, but on this, it's still working quite fine. We're shooting the long codec for everything that's filmed in 24 frames. And unfortunately, we have to use the all eye codec for everything that is slow motion because the iMac that Bell is editing on can't handle the footage when it comes to 4K 60 when shooting in long format. And just a little shout out on the side, we're using a brand called Pierre Gear for our CF Express cards and they are really affordable. And we've been using this for probably a year now and we never had any issues with this brand. So just a little disclaimer, and there's a link in the description below for you to check them out because those are probably the most affordable CF Express cards you can get on the market right now. We're using the Canon C300 Mark III for about 99% of all the shots that we're using on this documentary. But when Franco and I are shooting at the same time, he is using the Canon C70. And truth be told, I could have used the Canon C70 for this entire project in and of itself, but I chose the Canon C300 Mark III because I just like it a little bit more. Other than the Canon C70, the only other camera that we're using is the Canon EOS R5 for time lapses, and I also had to use it for some small location shots here and there. As for lens choices, we brought an array of different kind of lenses, and all of them have their special needs. Some of them I use a lot of the times, whereas some of them I only used a couple of times. 
So let's start with all the lenses that I used, ranked from where I used them the least to where I used them the most. The lens that I brought on this project that I thought that I'm going to use a lot is the Canon 70-200 to because I wanted to get close to the players and their chips and just be able to get some detailed shots. In the end, 70-200 to on a Super 35 sensor like the Canon C300 Mark III's is just way too long and the 24-70 to was way sufficient for this. I'm still happy that I brought it because A, when Franco is shooting simultaneously, the 70-200 to on a full frame sensor like the Canon C70 with the speed booster is actually a perfect detail shot lens. Also, when somebody would have made a final table, which so far it hasn't happened, and then that would have been played on the big stage, I would have used the 70-200 as well. But for this project, I only used it once on a Canon C300 Mark III, and ever since I haven't really used it, but it's still good to have in my tool bag. The next lens I brought is the Canon 16-35, and this has been used for all of the time lapses that we shot, as well as when Franco uses the Canon C70. But again, this has happened only twice on this project so far, so this is a lens that I definitely need for the time lapses, but for the main storylines and the Canon C300 Mark III, I haven't used this at all. Next up is the Canon 24-70 2.0. And that is the perfect lens paired with the Canon C300 Mark III to shoot detailed slow motion b-roll shots. And I've been using this a lot. Unfortunately, 24mm on a Canon C300 Mark III is just way too narrow to shoot anything other than b-roll because you can't really get some people in the shot as well as record audio close enough for it to be actually a decent audio solution. So the 24-70 is only being used for slow motion shots and detailed shots. But for this, the range of 24-70 on a Super 35 sensor is actually pretty great. The lens that I use the second most is my Sigma 18-35 T2 Cine Rehouse lens by a company called Cinematics. And I love this lens. 18-35 is an awkward focal length for documentary though, because 18mm is not wide enough to get a couple of subjects in frame and still be close enough to record decent audio and 35mm isn't really close enough to record detailed shots. So this is my hybrid lens and I use this when I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen if I need to record audio and people talking but I want to get closer to the action. So when people sit down at a poker table, they're involved in a hand, 18-35 to is a really great lens for everything that is in between B-roll as well as just pure A-roll. Last but not least, the lens that I used the most on this project and I'm talking 85% plus is my Tokina 11-20 to T2.9 Cine lens. And this is an amazing lens on a Canon C300 Mark III for shooting documentary because 11 millimeters is wide enough to capture multiple subjects in the frame and still be close enough to my subject to record audio. 20 millimeters gives me a little bit of background separation if I want to get a little closer to my subject and the T2.9 actually offers a lot of fast speed so that I can record in darker environments. This lens isn't perfect by any means and there are some things that I don't like about this lens and I do have a full review of this lens on my channel for you to check out but it is perfect enough for this situation and I think it's the best lens you can choose for the job when shooting with the Canon C300 Mark III. Let's talk time lapses. Time lapses are such a crucial factor when it comes to long time documentaries because you need to show locations as well as the passing of time. Especially when you shoot an episode over several days, you need a lot of different time lapses, day to night, night to day, day as well as night. And since most of the guys are playing at the Rio, which you can see right behind us, it's also quite tricky to find good locations to show the Rio from because there's only so many angles you can show that casino when you're shooting a documentary over the time of six weeks. Like here, for example. Or here. Or here. As well as here. Here we climbed up to a parking garage because it really gives us a nice view over a little bit of the strip as well as the Rio from across the street. So right now we're shooting a time lapse, starting day and going all the way through night. Time lapses again are really crucial although sometimes it takes 3-4 to four hours just to shoot, then more editing and it will only make it into the video for a couple of seconds, but those couple of seconds are worth it. Right now I'm using the EOS R5 with the 16 to 35 which is what I shoot all my time lapses on. Sometimes I use a longer lens, but most of the times it's a wide angle lens like the 16 to 35. Works out perfectly, R5 has a built-in intervalometer which also works perfectly, so this is the setup that I use. And again, you can't have enough time lapses when you shoot a documentary. 
Another thing that's really important is location shots because you can use them to transition from one scene to another and you can't have enough location shots, trust me, because you really need them to just overlay them when you want to hide some cuts and just from transition from one scene to the next. And those ha don't have to be really fancy time lapses or drone shots, but it could be just a regular 24 frames shot of the location you have your subject being placed in. Speaking of drone shots, usually we use our Mavic 2 Pro to fly the drone just to get more location shots. Unfortunately here in Vegas you can't really do this because there's so many helicopters and there's also a lot of airplanes right next to where we are right now. So we can't use the drone but we are still using some aerial shots and we got ours from Artgrid. And if you want to sign up to Artgrid because there's a lot of great stock footage out there for affordable prices, there's a link down in the description below for you to check out as well. For this series I decided to shoot everything handheld. I did bring a gimbal but I haven't used it because I feel like the smooth movement doesn't really fit what we're shooting here. In such a raw behind the scenes documentary where you should feel like you're one of the guys just walking with them, I think the handheld organic look is just the way to go. Obviously I also did bring a tripod for all the time lapses but other than that I'm not using a shoulder rig and I'm purely shooting everything handheld. And if you want to get some tips on how to shoot better handheld then I will link a video up here for you to watch later. So this was it. This was the full behind the scenes of this six week documentary project here in Las Vegas and if you have any more questions leave them down in the comment section below. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. Subscribe for more and I hope to see you on the next one. Blah blah blah. Okay. I'm everything. I am everything. This is what most of you are most interested in most of these videos. I said most three times in a row. If you have any more questions of me being run over by a fucking car. At my Canon Z300 Mark C. We're using right. a... Attention all players. Please make your way to your seats as quickly as possible. I know those hallways are crowded. Damn it, that was good. Next up is the Canon 24-70 2.8 version 2 or 3. I don't know. Cut. That does not sound healthy at all. Dude, fix your fucking car. Oh, I need to cut. <laughs>